there was a period in my life back during the 1980s when I didn't have bird dogs and I'd kind of gotten out of quail hunting. And I found a hobby that kind of filled the void and that was slow pitch softball. Uh, now that I'm back into quail hunting, uh, several years ago, my bird dog Susie and I came up with the idea called a softball habitat evaluation technique or SHEP. Be careful with your enunciation. I find in working with landowners and hunters that a lot of people don't know what a good landscape for quail should look like. And so several years ago I came up with this Shet analogy and it turns out there's a lot of similarities between slow pitch softball and good quail habitat. And we'll examine some of those. Remember back to when you played slow pitch softball, anytime the softball is exposed, it's up in the air, somebody's trying to catch it or whack it. And a quail has about those same dilemmas. On some softballs, you'll see the words restricted flight. It's, it's by design that you can't hit a softball very far. If you can hit a softball 275 feet, I want you on my team. That's a long ways. And that would be a, a, a decent flight for a bob white quail. So that's one similarity. Down the right field line, it's about 275 feet. To first base, it's 60 feet. The pitcher's mound is 46 feet. So all those are distances that are going to come into play when we talk about quail. All right, some other dimensions of the softball field. If I ask you to think about the dimensions of home plate, it's about like this. That's about the dimensions of a good nesting clump of grass, what we call a bunch grass, like silver blue stem or little blue stem, ought to be about the size of home plate. The area of two batter's boxes together, that's about the size of a good clump of prickly pear for nesting habitat. Think of where the defensive players are on the field and how many are there. There's 10, not nine, 10 in slow pitch softball. There's an extra outfielder called a rover. And if you visualize in your mind where those defensive players are, ideally you'd have a good quail house at each one of those locations. So that gives you a, a mental image of what that field should look like. The, the infielders should be, they're closer than the outfielders, but we won't be able to throw a softball in the air from one quail house to the next. And if we can do that, that gives it a good idea about how well interspersed or how the arrangement of brush should be out there. So if I look over here, obviously there's one quail house right here, I could hit that one very easily. And then as I look around, oh, back here behind me out there where I might have a short fielder at, I could hit that one. If you can throw that softball in the air from one quail house to the next, that basically says a quail is close enough to brush that it can escape when a Cooper's hawk comes into the scene. So that's a good defensive strategy. Have a quail house everywhere you got a defensive player. A lot of people will ask you, can cover get too thick for quail? What's the ideal amount of ground cover for quail? And I answer that with a couple of respects to the softball. Number one, if you pitch that softball pitching distance, now it's 46 feet, if I toss that softball that far and I can still see the softball from where I'm standing, insufficient cover. We've got to adjust our grazing management, lighten up our stocking rate to where we grow more cover. We want, we want that ball to be invisible to us from 50 feet away. The other thing is, people say, well, can't ground cover get too thick? And I say, it can. Quail do need bare ground, but that's rarely a problem for us here in West Texas, but it can happen. When that ball hits the ground after I've pitched it, if it sticks, does not roll, that country is too thick. But if it rolls even this far, it's okay for a quail. Of course, a special concern relative to quail are those chicks. When those chicks are newly hatched, they're a quarter of an ounce, and they stand tall and saddle about two inches high. So this kind of cover might look like a bamboo forest to them. So the way we evaluate whether or not it would make good brooding habitat for that mama quail and those chicks, typically we'd use a golf ball. We'll drop a golf ball down on the ground and see if we can kick it around with our feet. It's getting a little thick for the chicks, but it's fine for the adults. Keep in mind that you've got to have good bunch grasses for good quail nesting cover. People would say, well, how many do you need? Think about the area prescribed by the base paths, 60 by 60. That's less than a tenth of an acre. You ought to have about 25 to 30 bunch grass clumps the size of home plate 
inscribed within that base path. If you do that, then you're looking at about 300 or so per acre, and through our research, we feel like that's a minimum for providing good nesting habitat. Good nesting habitat is a good defense against nest predators. The softball analogy continues when you think about your bench. How many players are on a softball team? 12 to 14. That's about how many birds there are in a covey. And then finally, there's a guy or a gal who stands back behind the catcher, typically wearing a, a light blue shirt. What do you call that individual? Well, it depends on the last call he made, right? But he's the umpire. He's to interpret the rules of the game. In the softball habitat evaluation technique, I ask you, who's the umpire? And the answer is look in the mirror. It's you as the land manager. You decide what's going to happen on your field and whether it's going to be good for quail or not. You got to think about their cover, you got to think about their food, you got to think about their interspersion. Three strikes, you're out.